Good evening, everyone. Nice to see you all. Give us a wave. That way we know you're real people. So that's really important. So thank you very much for joining us tonight. So, uh, so yeah, tonight we've got a nice cheery subject for you, suffering and everything that goes along with it. Uh, and the background to this is it's actually a discussion we had in our Lyceum in Edinburgh uh, a few months ago. And, you know, somebody posed the subject, you know, we're asking, what do you want to talk about or at the next session? And somebody said, what about suffering? And I remember thinking, oh, my God, you know, that'll be a cheery evening. And actually, it turned out to be quite a good evening. So I've got high expectations of all of you. And really, the backdrop to this is, you know, we talk about, of course, being spiritual beings and how the spirit world is there guiding us, supporting us whilst we are making the decisions within our own lives. But, you know, there's always this point that if there is a God and if there is this universal intelligence there, why do we have the wars and why do we have the suffering effectively in the world uh, that we do? And then we started to think about, well, is there maybe a point to it? Is there a spiritual point to it or isn't there? But then that begs the question, why does that happen? You know, is it meant to be a learning experience? Uh, you know, as spiritualists, how should we understand suffering and discord, disharmony in life? Uh, does that help us become better people if we've experienced some of these things? So really, that's what we want to talk about tonight. So I want to get your thoughts. So you do need to participate. And if you don't, we pick on you. So that's how it works. So, uh, so you do need to, and I'm sure it's something you've all thought about, you know, that, you know, I'm very conscious on a, a Sunday in our Sunday morning service in church, you know, you, you're praying for, you hear about the atrocities of what's happening in Ukraine, for instance, and other parts of the world. And, and you're paying, praying to that universal intelligence, asking for support, for guidance, for those who need it and, and for peace to be in the world. But of course, we know that's not happening. That's not the case. Uh, so why is that the case? Is there a point to all of this? And then, it, as I say, kind of gets us to think about our life here in this world, that we all know that a life isn't uh, a bed of roses all the time. We do have problems. We do have issues within our own personal lives, as well as we see it within other people's lives. So why? What's the point? So that's what we really want to talk about tonight. So, want to get your thoughts. Uh, if you do want to speak, then please put up your virtual hand. That's important, or wave frantically, because I think we're all on the, the one screen here if you're looking at the gallery view. Uh, so, let's get talking. So, before I pick on you. So, any thoughts on what do you think the point of suffering is? Is there any point, or is it just one of these things in life that, that we go through? As a spiritualist, how do you see these events within not only our own lives, but the wider world as well, too. Any thoughts? Yes, Tim. Thank you, Tim. I know someone was taking a big deep breath then because you're oh, going right. forward, so. yeah. <laughs> On you go, Tim. Kick us off. As spiritualists, we believe that we're on a journey in the physical, pilgrimage in the physical, to learn, to develop, to evolve. So if that's an individual journey, um, we have to experience light and dark, good and bad, pain and, and pleasure, um, suffering and, and not suffering. So that's the only way we can learn, isn't it? By, yeah. by actually experience what's going on. Now, of course, that, that makes perfect sense in a development sense for an eternal being. But it all falls apart when you think, like you said in the Ukraine, why would you possibly come on a journey to get shot to pieces? And nothing else. So you don't get the pleasure, the pleasure and pain thing. You just get the pain thing. So it, it does beg the question: What is going on, really? What What is suffering about? If it's individual and it's learning, I can understand that. But look at the world. I mean, how? What proportion of the people on this planet are not getting that learning experience? And, and that's, I suppose, the question that we should all be asking. And what? Can that yeah. begs a question, Tim, as well, too, though, if you think about your Ukraine, thankfully, we're not directly experiencing that because we're not there. But perhaps we could be sharing in that experience because we're all learning about it. 
and hopefully our empathy is of course with those uh, people there in Ukraine and many people are trying to support as much as they possibly can. So maybe there is something we can be learning from that, albeit it's not directly affecting our well, lives. You know? I'm sure there are a lot of pe people in the UK right now who are suffering with gas bills and electricity bills. So I suppose there is a suffering, a peripheral yeah. suffering there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's not life or death, but it is life changing. Um, uh, so I don't know where, where <laughs> I don't know where this gets to. Individually, there is a purpose to it. I can see that because it's light and dark. Okay. If you take general humanity, then, then it, I don't know, it seems to fall apart at that point. But maybe to come back to your point, what you'd said there at the beginning, Tim, is that we're all in a learning experience. We're on a journey here in this world. Uh, and I entirely agree as a spiritualist. I also accept that, you know, in believing life is eternal, I believe we've a finite time here in this world to experience the physical world in all its glory, uh, good, bad, and indifferent. And whether we've got a three score in 10 a little bit longer or shorter, that's what it's all about. It's about having that experience, which for some people could be a terrible experience. Absolutely. So but is that part of life's journey? And then again, as I say, if we hear of these stories from other people, and hopefully spiritualists being compassionate people towards other people's lives, we are maybe we're saying, okay, thank God we are not going through that, but we can understand the pain that they are experiencing. So maybe we learn from that to make sure we don't also experience the same thing. So maybe it's part of, I think you were saying there, it's kind of shared experience of humanity. I, I think one of the things that struck me in, in the news recently, there was, there was this really harrowing experience of a, of a person in the car who was then shot and his father was shot and they had to, he had to get into a ditch and yet he, you could hear his father dying. Now, that was really one-to-one -one experience. The, the media has changed things quite considerably, I think. You know, war is becoming much more personal now for us all. Um, yeah. So I suppose, you know, the, the, the harrowing sorrow in the voice of the, the son was terrible. Yeah, of course. Yeah. And for once you can experience that, you can actually get in there, you're in the car with them. It's terrifying, really, isn't it? Exactly, exactly. And years, of course, of, years ago, of course, you, you heard about things happening in Africa and different parts of the world. And, you know, it, it felt so far away, you were remote from it, so it didn't really affect you. Uh, and I think maybe even with Ukraine and everything that's been happening there, it's made us all think, actually, you know, it's still far away from the UK, if that's where we are, uh, but it's still in our doorstep. So it makes it a bit more real. And I'm very conscious of many of you come from different parts of the world. So maybe you approach this from a different experience. I think we're very lucky in the UK. We've lived largely in a peaceful society for a long time, but other people haven't had that luxury, shall we say. And uh, what... How has that experience impinged on your life and affected you and your attitude as a spiritualist? So, so thanks, Tim, for kicking us off. Henrietta, you were going to come in there? Yes, I want to react to Tim about why maybe the, the war is going on in the Ukraine, because all Western countries were dragging their feet in reforming the energy supplies in their own countries. And now, because of Russian gas, entire Europe has to get off gas by the end of this year, I'm afraid. And that is at record speed. That we have to get alternatives for the gas all over the place. Yeah, yeah. And maybe it's to save the earth in the end. Yeah, so you can think that could be a benefit, a long-term benefit from it. Yes. So now it's very painful. I mean, people in Ukraine are suffering. Everybody's trying to help them. And maybe it's also for Ukraine to get more independent from Russia because Russia was controlling Ukraine. Mm -hmm. Even though they were a free country, they weren't free. Yeah. They couldn't yeah. join the West. They couldn't do anything with the West because... Um, Mr. Putin wouldn't have it on his doorstep. Yeah, no, exactly, exactly. And I'm afraid that when Mr. Putin gets his way with Ukraine, it's not the end of it. Yeah. There are other states that he wants back. So, yeah. 
Well, I think that's everybody's fear, isn't it? Yeah. Um, so there might be wider, longer term benefits, effectively. Yes. That, also, that's, that's what you're thinking, albeit there's immediate term, suffering for those people. And also short term <laughs> problems in Africa now, mm -hmm. which Ukraine was the main wheat supplier for Africa. Yeah, of course. And it's Hungary, ramifications throughout the world, isn't it? It's doubled over this year in, a, in the East Horn yeah. of Africa. Mm -hmm. I just heard that on the news today. Yeah. And they cannot they can hardly afford all the materials they need to feed these people. Yeah. They don't have the sunflower oil, they don't have the wheat. How are going to make the food for these children, the emergency food for the malnourished children? Yeah. No, thank you for that, Henrietta. Lisa, you were going to, you'll get your hand up there too. Yes, um, I understand that what we've been talking about with war and that, that we will understand suffering better with these people and that we will learn to empathise. What I don't understand is suffering when it comes in terms of a newborn baby that dies shortly after and never experiences anything but suffering. How do we how do we accept that sort of suffering? I know, I know, exactly, yeah. But again, there's a wider impact as well too. There's the impact on the family, the mother and other members of that family too. So maybe there is a wider experience there. Uh, I often think though, Lisa, you know, with these horrible scenarios, horrible as they are, I wonder, you know, if we're here to learn special lessons, is it because we can't learn those kind of lessons in spirit? Is, is, is really that the point? The point of being here to, to learn these, all of these different experiences, good, bad, and indifferent? That maybe uh, we can, yes, I can see that, the spirit. wider family, but, but what about the child itself? Yeah, yeah. Well, maybe that's a, let's not get into that today, but I think there's a whole session maybe just on that. Uh, and even still, still births and all of that, you know, just you, you do wonder, you know, what is the experience of this world just to go through that, if they do go yeah. through that, you know, so uh, you, uh, your uh, mind constantly goes round on these things, doesn't it, thinking yeah. What, yeah. what possibly could be the point, and we're, I guess we all to a certain extent know people who have really suffered in their life through physical illness, from birth, right the way through the life, and had excruciating pain, et cetera, et cetera. And you think, what was the point of that? You know, what, what, why did they need to go through that? You know? Yes. I, I'm, a, I'm a Christian spiritualist. And even with my, before I found spiritualism, I could never reconcile this with my own church. The yeah. fact that the God who loves everyone could, could let that happen to a child. Yeah. A, a, new, a, a newly born child, not even a child that's had time to experience the world. But then we can move on to that conversation. But, you know, is this, you know, again, it's going back to what I said earlier about we've got this universal intelligence, this power of God that is there striving for good, but then could allow such horrible and quite frankly evil things to happen at times. But is that God that's doing that or is God part of an experience of good and bad? That's another thought as well, too. Maybe that universal intelligence is is a combination of experience, and that's what we're we're striving to touch into and uh, and learn from. You know, so maybe our concept of God and how God inspires us and how God influences. Maybe we need to rethink that to to make sense of some of these issues that happen in our own lives. So uh, can, I, can I just? Come yeah, in. Sure. Just on that, I, I promise I won't keep you waiting for those of you who've got your hands up, but just to say on that point, um, oh, good evening, everybody. I forgot to say that. Sorry. Um, that um, I, I maybe it's just a thought to, you know, that, that I have, which is that that um, power, that pervading power, maybe takes an objective stance. In other words, we have the tools, but it's up to us how we use them. Mm -hmm. So there, so in other words, there isn't a, a good God or a bad God. There is God. Mm -hmm. and, it, and, and it's up to us as to how we develop 
and how we use that power to the good or the bad. I'm just throwing that out there. Aren't yeah. But also on that, Simone, you know, I think we always have this concept, or many people do, that God is a controlling power, so yeah. that God decides and makes decisions. Yeah, I don't I, believe no, I don't, that. No, neither do I. As That's a what I, just want to I, say. I very much see that, yeah, we have war, we have famine, we have horrible experience in our lives, but it's mankind that creates that. That's not right. God. Yeah. Uh, now, I'm, I'm hoping God can influence us to. to gives a pathway through that and learn from that experience but it, that's all within our making and it's our decisions that have affected that horrible experience and that's what i i believe that yeah yeah and i, think, I, so I, I remember um, some years ago i used to work for a charity that worked primarily for people and children with learning disabilities and and i i'd always been t told within spiritualism that we choose our family, we choose how we come into this world and so on. I'm not saying I specifically uh, agree with that, but I'm just saying what I was taught, like yeah. a, a lot of us have taught that. And I asked the spirit world because I, 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 I was working with people with very severe learning disabilities and physical disabilities. Why would somebody choose to come into our world in that way? And the answer I got was to bring out the best or the worst in the in humankind. I mean, that goes back to what we were saying there That's on right. Lisa's point, you know, okay, maybe for that individual child, that baby, uh, you could question what experience they, they're having because that's a horrible experience. Uh, but then it's more the effect it has on other people and, yeah. and, and how it changes their lives. And maybe they're the people that had to experience that. Yeah. So... I, it's very hard to go back to Lisa's point. I think it's it's a very hard one to justify, and I think anybody who's been through that experience, mm. I, I don't, I don't think no, no, anybody. It's, can, it's not. Uh, yeah, I don't know that anyone of us can justify that. Yeah. Um, and, and I, I don't think, think we can even really talk emotional. about it unless yeah. you've been through it either. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, I, think I think it also does. I, I certainly do believe that an experience like that would help us to understand someone else that's gone through it. Yeah. As well. So it brings out the best in us in terms of empathy. That's yeah. where I would come from. Okay. So that brings me, just before you go, Simone, and yeah. then we'll bring other people in. Yeah. That does turn this on its head, thinking about the spiritual point of that. Is there a spiritual point to that? And there could well be, because it's making us more spiritually aware yeah. through that experience. Yeah. We're learning from each other as well as from our own experience. Yeah. So maybe there is a spiritual point there. Yeah, because I, I, again, very, very quickly, I don't want to take up everybody's time, but I, some years ago, um, locally, I, I live in Norfolk and it's, you know, I live in a village and there was a local village near me um, where there was a little girl who had cystic fibrosis and she, and the whole village, i am cut a long story short, but the whole village took part in the programming for that little girl. And the little girl passed when she was three years old. And you, you thought, why? Why did that happen? But then when you saw how many people came together for that, for that, it brought the village together. It brought yeah. people together. Yeah. And maybe that's another thing that we're, we're missing when it comes to, yeah. um, you know, difficulties. We're missing how it brings, a, a difficulty can bring people together. Yeah, exactly. And even if you think of Ukraine as well, going back yeah, to that absolutely. example, you know, think about how many of us here in this country, in the UK anyway, and I'm sure other parts of the, the world too, have opened our doors to Ukrainians yeah. and said, come and, come and share our lives. Come, we'll support you, we'll help yeah, you. Absolutely. And would we have done that without having that experience? Maybe yeah. that's made us different people and yeah. allowed us to think about ourselves in a different way and how we can show compassion to our fellow human beings. Which is and I think, I think for me, that's the whole crux of this issue, which is all about compassion and empathy. Yeah. Other, without so is that, that the spiritual point? Yeah. It, yeah. Is, that, is that why we're here in this world? To really learn to be compassionate and emp empathetic? Maybe that we don't have that experience in spirit. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I'll tell you when I go there. I'll come back and tell you. <laughs> Uh, maybe not actually I'll just leave you work it out for yourself yeah thanks John uh, <laughs> well, sounds, sounds like you yeah <laughs> but, but you do wonder in spirit you know can they have similar experiences mm -hmm. in spirit I can't get my head around that one probably not I think that's why we've got this world 
to learn these things. Yeah. Just a thought. Okay, here we go. Yeah. Thanks, Simone. Okay. Yeah, okay. Lisa, anything else? Sorry, we did cut, cut in on what you were saying. Um, so, so on that basis, maybe then that the baby gets its happiness and reward when it passes over, if it's very fast. Because I, it, exactly. I just can't see anything. Other, I, I can see great for other people that it's, it's inspiring this exactly. love and passion, but not for that one child or it's not something I've experienced. I'm not speaking from experience, yeah, but course, not for that one child that yeah. this happens to. Do they then get their rewards? Yeah, yeah but can I, can I just come in on that? Because if you can, you know, it, it, that, that child would still have experienced love and the love of all the people around it, you know, that, that had cared for that child, even if it was moments old, mm. but that, that that child would have experienced love and that may be what that child needed before it went back. I don't know. I haven't got the answers. I'm just, yeah. that's how I see it. And of course, the spiritualist, I know you're approaching it from both a Christian and a spiritualist mm. perspective, but as spiritualists, we believe they're still part of that family. So they haven't yeah. gone. Yeah. They're still there. They're still being loved and comforted. And, and I'm sure they are still growing and developing in the spirit world without the pain and the suffering aspect of it. So, yeah. uh, you know, there is a benefit. I, I guess we all hope that's the case, but I'm sure it is because we're aware that that family continues together. It doesn't separate. It doesn't go into oblivion, that baby. It's still very much a part of the lives of that family. So, yes, of course. Yeah. Yes. But thanks for raising that, Lisa. I think it's a really yes, important point. point. And, really good point. And, and uh, as we all say, unless we've t had that horrible experience in our lives, it's difficult for us to uh, intellectualise. Uh, but, you know, I think it's a fair point. We do need to think about, uh, you know, what happens and the what ifs in life. Yeah, thank you. Thank Mary, you. you've got your hand up there. Good morning from New Zealand. Morning. Um, a lot of what Simone said that I was going to talk about is like as spiritualists, um, especially those of us that are mediums and healers, do we feel it's necessary to know the suffering and feel the suffering so we can help those that come to us for guidance and healing? For me, that the suffering I've had in my life has made me a better person so that I can help others. And I'm sure that touches a lot of healers especially. So is that not why we do experience suffering at times? For that empathy? Yeah. Well, that's what I'm saying. Maybe it's to teach us compassion and empathy. And you're even saying as a healer, you know, you're, you're trying to help other people. And it's a good way to help other people by experiencing it yourself and understanding it more. But yeah. Yeah, that could well be the point. Uh, I know as a widow, I get a lot of people coming to, older women coming to me who have lost partners. Yeah, I see you tend to attract those that have had the suffering that you've had so okay. you can help them. Yeah. Yeah, a good point. Yeah, Mary, exactly. So it does, you know, hopefully this all kind of makes sense of the horrible things that are happening in our lives and, and in the world, you know, and, uh, and then we can move on and think about the spiritual aspect of it, but you know, as spiritualists, we're here to live a fulfilling life and be as healthy and as wealthy and as uh, happy as we possibly can be, but also bring that into other people's lives as well too, mm -hmm. the best way we can. And if that's through sharing our experience and healing, then that's absolutely fine. Yeah, great. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Mary. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I know Henrietta's is already, we'll bring you back in in a second, but we'll let Rachel go. She's not speak, spoken already. Hi, Rachel. Hi. How are you tonight? So this is fantastic. Love it. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I was just kind of touching on um, following up with what Mary had just said. Um, I am very new to learning about um, the spiritualist religion and, and um, the full belief system behind that. But um, I have experienced myself a lot of death and pain that has gone um, throughout my lifetime. And, um, and most recently um, with the death of my husband um, for over 20 years. So 
um, that has since motivated me to change um, my complete life and on the spiritual aspect of going on a spiritual journey because I considered myself to be um, a religious person in the past. And then all of that kind of got wiped out over the years. I felt like worn out and down, but then um, kind of like a, like a fire uh, that burns through a hillside. It burnt my whole world to the ground and now has been some beautiful regrowth and looking at the world and learning things in a completely different way. And I'm using those tools uh, to reach out and to work with other people who have um, are suffering loss and trying to move forward with their life. So it's kind of like those old puzzles where you start out with a really small view of something. And then as you put it together, it begins to make more sense. And that's something so wonderful that I'm experiencing is that things that made no sense to me and how and why are suddenly starting to bloom into a larger perspective and a larger and a larger one. And I can't even imagine um, coming from spirit world, what they are noticing, how everything from up there is unfolding and how that's what it's creating for after we pass on and following through with, you know, choosing our families and, you know, kind of all staying involved, just working those things from different levels of, you know, my, my parents, my grandparents or whomever in spirit, how that comes through um, to me and how I'm able to feel um, regrowth, rejuvenated and a re-sense of connection that gives people hope instead of feeling hopeless. So I think that's been um, the most valuable thing that I have found since um, coming to like SNU and, and things like that. So for that, I'm very grateful. Well, that's great. Thanks for sharing that with us, Rachel. Without getting into obviously the personal circumstances of what you've been going through, you, you seem to allude to the fact that there's been a turning point in your life. So you were going through a really horrible experience and then you were talking about the regrowth uh, th th there must have been a realization that actually, you know what, I can get out of this, I, I can be better, I can be happy again. Uh, what was that turning point for you that you, you can show yeah. without getting into the detail of the scenario? Yeah. What no, was it, a, a light bulb moment? Did you wake up one morning and think, I'm not going to feel this way anymore, I'm going to get on with it? Uh, or it what really happened? was, it really was, um, it was just a moment of, of sitting there and saying, okay, you know, how much longer am I going to sit on this couch and feel sorry for myself? Yeah. Um, and trying to figure out, you know, going back into, we had just entered the pandemic, going into back into the workforce, um, what that was going to look like. And it was so funny because I, I started out initially thinking, I'm just going to create a business for myself. And as I started down this whole spiritual journey, I met people who were, um, you know, more like into the new age and shamans. And, and these are things that were completely considered taboo um, with my spiritual religious upbringing. And yet I was drawn to it. It made sense in my heart. And the more um, that grew within, si within my, my soul, um, the more I couldn't, it couldn't be denied. And I have felt a lot of flack from a lot of family members who are like, are you crazy? But the, the thing to me is, is that this is what I was searching for, I feel like my whole life. And it was, it's almost like through all of these tragedies, it has pulled it out of me and it has drawn me back to God. Um, whereas before I, I felt I was living by rules and not by my connection to spirit, to God, to, you know, humanity as a whole. And, um, and I just felt like I have to pursue uh, the things that are going to encourage this positive, what I feel is positive growth and sharing um, love and experience with my, my fellow humans um, in every capacity, because otherwise, um, 
I was, I felt like I wasn't making the most of it and of my life. And that was something that as I was on this journey and um, I found out about Arthur Finley College originally and then SNU, uh, that's where it developed. It was like, this is an experience that yeah. we're here to have. And I am not doing my, my experience on this earth any justice if I'm wrapping myself up in, you know, in sitting down and, and things like that, I have to take action. Um, and through that action uh, continues growth and inspired growth. Um, and I think that's so important that if people can understand that, yeah. that those are possible, those things are possibilities for sure. And that's really inspiring actually. So, so through that horrible experience, if I'm getting you right, and you starting to think differently, uh, that's brought you into spiritualism, really. Absolutely. So it allowed you to, to think about spiritualism, which I guess you never did before, coming from the background that you did. You would never have thought about anything that we were right. talking about or uh, in yeah, um, that's the thing it, the funny mind. thing was, I was originally, um, I met with a girl who was, she did Akashic Records and I had never thought about, I never knew about it. I never knew about the spiritualist religion. Everything that I had ever been taught was that, you know, um, mediumship and uh, psychic abilities and being intuition and things like that are, are taboo and you just don't do it. Um, but it, it opened, I started to consider things that happened in each religion and how they all have that commonality, that all that that thread that weaves through it of the same thing, the connecting to the divine, um, whether they're using, um, you know, different types of sound or smells and incense or burning or things like that. You know, they're they're all woven throughout all different religions all throughout time. And so it began to make me think that it's us as humans who have kind of corrupted or added in our own um value system into the way that we connect to yeah. to god and um and when i when i realized that it was kind of like a wow i can connect and and i guess i was just led here um to be very honest because i haven't found anything that aligned with things that i believed and thought from a child and and never spoke of because i would be in trouble so <laughs> to wow, I have found exactly the things that I believe and the things that are true to me and understand and, and you know, that I do can communicate um, in, with spirit and I can feel the energies all around me and the frequencies and those types of things. Those are real. They're not my imagination. And yeah. to find a community that understands those values and appreciates them and uses those to go out into the world and help others in any capacity and giving respect to whatever their belief is and saying, Hey, you know, I honor what you believe and I honor, you know, the pain and suffering that you individually may be the same or may be different than me, but I love you and I'm here to support any way that I can. And that just all comes with the more of a connection that you make and opening yourself up to, to love and, and receive love and give love yeah. um, mutually. So I, I just think it's beautiful. Yeah. Well, thank you. Well, Rachel, you're here with beautiful people tonight. So, so we're all beautiful people together. I'm not too sure about Simone, but I think everybody else is just perfect. So there we go. Thanks for sharing your story. I think that's great. So, uh, and I'm sure we can all take something from that tonight too. Thanks. Henrietta, you've got your hand back up. Let's bring Henrietta. Yes. I thought about a person that suffered a lot, but accomplished a lot as well, and that is Nelson Mandela. Yeah. He was abused in prison. I think he was even on death row at some point. Yeah, but he was. Yeah. He learned a peaceful approach to life and to whatever happened to him. He learned to take what happened to him in the end, he ended up being the president of South Africa. Mm -hmm. A peaceful protest. And you know, and it, he very famously said, uh, you know, I have, I have no hatred or horrible thoughts about the people who did this to me. So he was able to show the compassion for the people who were terrible to him and caused suffering to him. So that, that's a big heart that can do that. I don't know if I could do that, but 
uh, he certainly was able to achieve he it. He had so. a choice. He could do exactly. That. Of course, of course, we do. Or he could suffer the consequences of not doing that. Yeah, yeah. And knew those. Yeah. So that's great. Thank you. It's great. De is it Deb, Debbie, or Deb? In your it is, it's Deb. Hi, you, my darling. Hello, everybody. Hi, Deb. Um, the, the, you were talking about uh, what people suffer for their lives, actually, within their own lives. Um, I've been ill for over 40 years, and it's what, what I have developed and what I have learned. It's made me stronger for who I am, and also seeing the, the people that are around me that have similar problems. Mm -hmm. And I can help others by my experiences, is what I've actually okay. been doing. But it's, uh, I didn't know about that it's actually spiritual until I met my husband. <laughs> Um, but I've always been the religion in a way, kind okay. of on the right church. Okay. Yeah, we found it in the end, but how different was it? Just I didn't feel at home with anybody else, any other religion. It's it's nice to have found some it's all got, got the like minded and we're all in this together, whatever we are going through. Okay. We've all going through the similar thing, but um it's what you experience within your life that you can bring the changes to, because everybody has have surgeries, have to have the problems and things change within their bodies. But I also wonder why me <laughs> at the time. Of course, yeah. But it's yeah, I understand it now, but I didn't then. So it's um, it's quite That's interesting. Idea. So yeah, so you got through that. So despite all that suffering, for want of a better word, yeah, that, that you've gone through for all those years. It, you actually feel it's made you a better person. Is that really what you're saying? It is in a way because I've learned a lot by it or what I've actually yeah. gone through. And I met people in hospital that I have helped to get through their surgeries. Mm -hmm. And it's about people that I meet now that's having problem with pain and problems. They don't know how to take the pain away sometimes. But it's through this development that I've actually got the stronger energy that I can really help myself now because it's got to that extreme where the pain is quite high that it, yeah. anything that takes it away is the spiritual connection so it's, oh, uh, it's just amazing yeah. it's, uh, yes unless you actually know this you you, you wouldn't actually understand it as you're first developing yeah, yeah. No, definitely. yeah so. well that's great yeah. news actually so no that's good so uh and again it's back to this i think we can understand that if we're able to take a step back and understand why we're going through it or what we could learn from it, how we can change our lives, as Rachel was saying, you know what, I'm not going to feel this way anymore. I'm going to get better. I'm going to change my life. Or for you, you're going to actually see the positive through this experience. Yes, uh, definitely. Yeah. You know, we're doing that in a very material way uh, here in this world. But, you know, is there a spiritual counterpart to that? Are we also evolving our souls? our spirit by yes. having these experiences. Yeah, uh, definitely. It was funny because when I was in hospital and had my surgeries, I always had this heart problem. I thought, mm -hmm. thought it was a heart problem, but it wasn't. It was my call-in guide, my guide that come to help me at the time, and he would raise my heart rate. <laughs> I'd be sitting at overnight and I'd have a night in hospital because my heart rate had gone up, but it wasn't my body. It was my spirit. That's okay. what's even the healing and the help. So I don't understand it until now. Yeah, like, or just your spiritual. Or, we all have our own spiritual awareness, under, yeah, understanding of things, and yeah. that's just yours. Whatever you call it, yeah. That, yeah, my, the, yeah, the guy's calling card would be the heart rate going quicker. There <laughs> so, we go. Very good. Yeah, Excellent. Yeah. So. Can I just um, just come in here because yeah. thank you very much, Deb. That was lovely. Um, thank you. But um, you know, it's about really about the 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 the, the, the question that we we've put to ourselves is you know is there a spiritual point to suffering and and I I have a theory I've got loads by the way but I've got a particular theory for today and if you ask me tomorrow you might get a different answer um but I, I have a I have a, a theory that the spirit will knows who we are they know how we think they know what we do but they don't know how we feel because they're not physical anymore they don't know how we feel. And I wonder sometimes if it's that the reason why we may have to suffer physically to have that experience. Please don't think I know what I'm talking about because I don't. But yeah, I but I think that's where we're getting to with this conversation though, Simone, because, you know, what can we experience in spirit? And of course, none of us really know. 
no. but you know, from our understanding that we have already as spiritualists, uh, and we see it as this wonderful place. And I know it's not going to really be like that, but that's how we portray it. But certainly, I've yet to hear somebody saying, I went to the spirit world or a spirit communicating and said, I'm really suffering. I'm having a terrible time here. You know, I don't know where to turn. I've never had that experience. So maybe that's why we're here in this world. Yeah. World, to yeah, experience remember, all just, that, not just bad things, but good things uh, as well, too. Get a more rounded It's all about how we life. feel, you know, whether yeah. we feel elated, whether, whether we feel high, you know, whether we feel low, you know. Yeah. Those are all things that I think are quite earthly. Um, today, as I say, if you ask me tomorrow, I might have a different answer. But it's just the fact that I know that in the beginning of my development, when the spirit came very close to me, it would be overwhelming. Absolutely. And I'm not on my own. I know lots and lots yeah. of people this happened to where they were too close, just too close. Yeah. And I had to ask them to step back because it was too painful, to be honest. And that's what started making me think that they don't know how I feel. I could tell them and that was fine, but they didn't automatically know it. And so, and, and we always talk about the fact that the spirit world learns from us as we learn from them. Yeah, it's true. So, and there's that part of me, that very cynical part of me, I'm afraid, that says, well, if, we, if they're learning from us, then why do we have to come back here if we can learn from the people here? But there's, there's a lot more to that question. I know yeah. that. Yeah. But it's just maybe they're learning from us because they don't know or they may have forgotten how it feels to feel. Yeah. And maybe and, this is the whole point. And we, we've talked about this before, Simone, in these sessions and other times when mm. we've had similar conversations uh, about, you know, I think as spiritualists, we focus too much in the hereafter. Yeah. We talk about the spirit living in spirit and how wonderful it is. And you don't need to worry about money. You don't have physical problems and pain, et cetera, et cetera. And I can understand that. I, I buy into that. But you know what? I think we forget about just the wonderful experience of life in this world. And if spiritualism teaches us anything, it's to appreciate this world absolutely. more. And it's that, about and life before is, death, not yeah, life after death. Absolutely, because that's the message from the spirit. It's enjoy life. Don't just yeah. endure it. Yeah. It's always that message from me. You know, whenever, yeah. you know, I'm giving messages to people, you know, publicly, privately, it doesn't matter. But that's the, the, the basis, the foundation of every message. Yeah. Is to enjoy sure. life because you never get it back again. Yeah. You exactly. know, you get that moment back again. Yeah. It's a special time here and, hmm. and let's cherish it. And albeit we will have the horrible times and some yeah. of us more than others, but there's a learning experience from that for us individually, maybe spiritually too, but yeah. for the people around us as well. I think that's what we're getting from the discussion tonight. Yeah. Henrietta, you were going to come back in there, so. Yes, I want to react to the statement that Simone says that spirit doesn't know how we feel. I think, I mean, I mean healing, and I think spirit knows exactly how we feel. We know when to give upliftment. No, I, I, I think I think it's that. that no, means, that's yeah. not what I'm talking about. They'll know it, how we're feeling mentally. I'm talking about how we feel physically. Obviously, whatever we, happens to us physically will affect us mentally. If you're in pain, you're, you know, yeah. you'll be suffering mentally yes. as well as physically. That's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about physical pain. I'm not talking about mental, emotional. That's not what I mean. Yes, but there also knows where the physical pain is and what the cause of the physical pain is, even if it's emotional or mental. They know that. Yeah, well, they would through the mind, but not necessarily be able to feel that. And, and if I tune into you right now, I could, if I wanted to, feel how you feel now. If it, I wouldn't, because it's intrusive. But normally, I, I know I would if I'm working with somebody like that, and I would be able to feel your pain. I don't feel they can do that. They will know where the pain is. They'll know what we're going through, but they won't be feeling it. That's my point. Yeah, it's the physical feel. That's yes, what you're yes about. it's just a physical thing. Yeah. 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 Not good. knowing and understanding. That's yeah, what I'm saying. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. And I can understand being a spiritual point to everything that we're going through yeah. because our spiritual selves need to learn that experience, mm. whatever that experience is. Uh, that would make complete sense. Yeah. Yeah. Angela. Hi, Hi. Angela. Hi. Hello. Hi. <laughs> so our discussion is about the, the spiritual side of suffering. And I was thinking to myself, well, we all suffer at times, but as spiritualists, we, we're, we're told that 
everything in this world, including us, is energy. And that energy cannot be destroyed, but it can be changed. And, and I do feel that when challenges come in our life, we change automatically our mindset because we're programmed for survival. So in one way, if there's a problem coming our way, we're thinking. So we're looking to our resilience, but also to our imagination to overcome, whether it be an illness or, you know, uh, a bad neighbor or whatever it is that's, you know, causing us suffering. And I think in looking to who we are and all the tools that we have within our toolkits, many that we never use, and we really start to dig deep, we find the answers that we need. And, you know, you, you hear of people that have had uh, near-death experiences and they come back and they've had this revelation. They completely changed their way of looking at things and they've come back giving the world a lot of positive energy and compassion. And we might say about all these wars and things, and I think humans, yeah, the world's a bit out of balance or, you know, a huge amount out of balance. And if it is all energy and we could eradicate some of these negative energies and obviously Russia, the aggression and, um, and things like that that are, that are going on in the world because everything's out of balance. So yeah. if we can transform the energy to be more in balance, then I feel there would be less suffering. But the suffering, it's an ill wind that doesn't blow any good because it really makes us as human beings look to who we are and really search for our own metal to survive, yeah. and overcome the obstacles in our way. Exactly. And that makes me think as well, Angela, you know, when we're talking about suffering or uh, just terrible experiences people go through, some people actually quite wallow in that suffering. Some people quite like it, actually. So they just live their lives that way. Uh, I, I've come across people like that. And actually, you learn something from that. Uh, and you're able to sit back and say, well, do you know what? See if that ever happens to me. I'm not going to react in that way. I'm going to react differently to balance out, just as you're saying there, Angela. So I think we learn from each other. And sometimes that could be just to learn a lesson, make sure if that ever happens to you, you're going to react differently or live your life in a different way. Uh, because not everybody, like all of us, wants to change to, for the good. Uh, that's not the case. That's not life. We know that. So, uh, But hopefully we, we all online here do, and we've had some experiences as to where that's happened. Uh, but I think we can easily assume that everybody feels that way or everybody wants to change for the good, and that's not always the case. I think the ones of us that want to change or actually want to look within ourselves, go a bit deeper, yeah, find our spiritual growth. And, exactly. you know, but I think that's one thing that unites us all online here as spiritualists. Whatever our background, wherever we've come from, I always say you could get what's there's 20 odd of us here online, 25 of us online tonight. If you were to ask us all, what is I think we just lost John. He's frozen. <laughs> is this part? Is this part of the spiritual, uh, the spiritual suffering that John must endure? We all must take this so, note from John. Yeah, yeah. We're learning, John, for you because of the spiritual suffering you are enduring with technology at this moment in time. Hello. Hello. <laughs> I'm back again. Sorry. The spirit world obviously overshadowed me there. And just <laughs> something that we've had enough of him. That's what it is. So they're interfering with my connection, so to speak. So, uh, but no, I think what I was trying to say there was that we're all striving for change. And I think that's something that's common in all spiritualists. And I think that's brilliant. That's really what we should be helping each other do, find a, a new pathway in life. So... Kirk, you're just going to finish us off, I think. On you go. Nice to see you again, Kirk. Hiya, John. You well? I'm good. Thank you. Um, yeah, I'm enjoying this discussion. It's very good. 
Um, my views are, um, especially of God, I, I view God as a, as if it's a fountain, as if God is unconditional love and it's just pouring out and pouring out. So therefore there's no size to be taken. It's down to humanity to make those choices and to be more spiritual. With regards to suffering, I think um, there's kind of a cause and effect and that's for our own growth and to find our, our, um, our true nature, which is love and kindness and compassion within each one of us. Like, um, But also I think there's a lot of unnecessary suffering in the world where um, people need to show their spiritual truth and show that awakening. There's, there's wars, there's people going hungry, there's electric prices going up. And yet there's, there's, there's materialistically, there's a waste of money everywhere, isn't there? Yeah, definitely. Because with regards to, um, you know myself, my background is I'm, um, I'm ex-military um, and I'm very anti-war as are most people. Um, but the military industrial, military industrial complex, um, it's, it's a waste of money. Trident, there's billions spent on nuclear missiles where people are going hungry in this world, where people are homeless. Money can go to better places. Yeah. No, exactly. Yeah, we've spoken about this before. So. Yeah. Yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's a very, and you, you're coming to it from a different perspective, having been in the military and you can share it firsthand, you know, working in that environment and, and what is the good out of all of that. And we can spend a whole night just talking about that, which we won't. But, uh, but yeah, I think it's fascinating to really get some focus on that. Yeah, that's good. Well, there is a silence, John, do you think, in the spiritualist community regarding, um, we have like local things where we do things as groups but worldwide there's no collective um platform yeah i don't think so where people are saying look find the true nature within you and again we've spoken about this before kirk in other sessions where i i think it's important that we as spiritualists albeit we come from different perspectives we'll have different views on things which is quite right we can still come together and have a collective voice without being political. I think that's yeah. possible. Yeah. Other religions can achieve it. Why can't we as spiritualists? And I just don't think we're there yet. Uh, we should be striving for it. That's change that needs to come about. But I think our philosophy of spiritualism can not only change our lives, and that's what everybody's saying here tonight. Mm -hmm. It's changed us in an individual way in some way, and hopefully that has an effect on other people. But we collectively could change the world of course we could through yeah. our understanding of spiritualism yeah, yeah. but that's but the bottom line at the but same time as well that from the rooftops that's that's the issue yeah at the same time john we were saying about not being political what is what is politics about it's about caring for people isn't it it's about looking yeah. after yeah. people it's about looking after the community so spiritual yeah. and political they, they go together so the world's in turmoil but it's still a good crack as well, like at the same time. <laughs> Where's he gone? He's frozen, he's frozen again. I'm waiting for him to come back. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Okay, well, we'll wait for John for a Sorry, bit. Sorry, my okay. connection's gone. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's a long few seconds when a, a CEO <laughs> flees and go, oh my God, what's happening? <laughs> so I'm not having a good night with the internet there. So there we go. <laughs> Thanks for that, though, Kirk. So I think it's, yeah. and maybe that's a session for another time, uh, you know, discussing that and what, what reaction we could have collectively as spiritualists to the, the events of life that's going on in the world. Yeah, exactly. Well, I think we're almost out of time, so we're almost there. Any other questions or points uh, that you would like to make on this subject? I hope we haven't depressed you too much tonight. So we've talked a lot about suffering, but I think there's, there's the whole point seriously behind this is that it happens. And how do we as spiritualists see that? How can we philosophize over that? Is there a point to it? Is there a spiritual point to it? And I think you've all come up with some 
great ideas and great su suggestions around that subject. Yeah, wonderful. Yeah. Um, next month, we, um, we're uh, on um, the Wednesday, the 8th, the 15th of June is our next session, Wednesday the 15th of June. And I'm just going to hand over to Daniel because I know he can explain this because it's technical far better than I can. Okay. Uh, I just want to reiterate uh, that we really appreciate all of you participating. And uh, John, we do not need to worry about us being in despair because the, when you review this and you'll see what your face, how your face appeared when you, when you were frozen, <laughs> we definitely got a chuckle out of all of it yeah you need to edit that out definitely. uh yeah we, no chance no chance <laughs> no chance it's gonna stay um but for everyone we would like to again appreciate the uh more participation by hearing more of your own ideas of mm. what subject matters you would like involved currently i have opened the ch chat room uh or sorry the chat box please if you will type in some of your ideas in that chat box now i know when we leave and go about our days we forget but please, if you enter that in now, we can have a uh, I can have a look over some of these and share them with our host this evening to have a better look at some of the subject matters you are interested in as well. Also, for those of you, uh, if you take a look on social media, this will also be posted upon social media so that other ideas can be gathered and all be brought forward together so that we can have quite a list to work from. So please, uh, that is open now. Enter ideas subject matters, even if it's just a one word comment to help us along, because we want to ensure that we are, we're talking about the items you want to know more about, or you have opinions about. Uh, so again, <laughs> um, we'll see how this goes. So thank you, John, for that. Uh, <laughs> and we'll for those be packed out in June, by the way, if we do that we one. Would. So. You definitely would. So unfortunately, those who are uh, watching this recording, you do not get to see the comments. So maybe <laughs> we will repeat them either. So we there will we not go. repeat it, but maybe if you'll show the show the next time, we'll have a more turnout as well to see. You wonder what John puts in the chat box. So um, <laughs> that's all I want to say. I'll turn it back over to our, our host this evening to, right. to end us out Thank this evening. You. Okay, all right. So just want to say thank you to you all for a really interesting evening. Um, I hope it's it's made you think perhaps a little bit differently to how you uh, came in this evening. Um, I know for me, it's uh, I thought it was going to be a bit depressing, but I have to say I haven't found it at all depressing. I found it actually quite enlightening. So thank you all very much indeed for your valuable contributions. It's so good to see you all. And, uh, and I hope to see you again next month. And just to say thank you to John and Daniel for all their support and their help too. Thank, thank you. you Thanks so much. Good night, everyone, That's or it. good morning, exactly. wherever you are. Wherever you are. <laughs> <laughs> Have a great day. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.